This is going to be quite the intense video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the majority of the Cars 2 LEGO collection. There is a couple sets missing here that I do not have yet. I'll get them eventually, but for the majority, this is the entire collection. So, without further ado, let's get into the review. Okay, so let's get one thing out of the way. I know people are going to ask, how much did I pay for all this? I'm going to tell you this right now. The most expensive one was Mac at $150 in this box right here. The box isn't mint, but it was still with its bags all complete. It's, you know, box damage is, you know, it, it, it's there pretty bad. They bought this originally at Disneyland, what they said on the listing on eBay. All of this came from eBay, by the way, but luckily every set I bought came with instruction booklets, not the boxes. The only ones that came with boxes was Flo's Cafe, Big Ben, and that Mac, but everything came, thankfully, with, you know, instruction booklets, and I was able to build everything. Um, I have two clips of me building Mac, this Cars 2 one and the Cars 3 one, and that's it, because if I would have done, like, a compilation of all of these being built, we would be here all day, so I just did, like, two time lapses of those two, and most of the sellers sent these already built. The only ones that I had to build right from scratch was that Tokyo race one, the clock, Sidley, and that's it. Everything else came pretty much built with like a couple pieces broken from, you know, shipment, obviously when the boxes are thrown because they don't give a crap of how they ship stuff. But other than that, everything was already built. Mac obviously, you know, straight out of the box came in the, in the poly bag, which, which was really cool. So I was able to build that one from scratch and I had a lot of fun building that one. Flows via Cafe, I think I paid $90. And I mean, it came with the box. So, I mean, that's a W in my eyes. That one, along with, I believe, Sidley and that Mater one, I think I got them all for $150 from one seller. Hopefully, I'm right there. Um, I think the, oh no, sorry, the Jet Mater and I think that Tokyo one came from one seller for $150, which isn't that bad. I think this one, this boat set, that red and pacer set, this Mater, Ivan Mater, um, and that Big Ben clock, I think was from one seller, along with that Francesco and McQueen one. Or I think the Big Ben was its own set. But point is, point is, the max I paid was like, like I said, Mac 150, and lots that had three sets were like 150. So overall, I think all of this... I don't think I went past $500. I really don't think so. But, I, and same with like the Cars 3 Mac that I'll show later in the video to compare it with this one. I think I paid like also $100 or $150 for it. It was pretty expensive. But point is, everything's here. We can actually review these things and um, just appreciate how good of a bygone era this 2011 slash 2012 collection of Lego was in its peak glory days. <laughs> Cafe comes with six vehicles slash minifigures, quote unquote, and of course the cafe itself. So builds like this, they're fun. Don't get me wrong. It's just that, you know, instead of building a minifigure of like three little pieces, you're building the cars from scratch. I mean, everything is a piece, which is kind of cool, but it makes the build a little lengthy. I don't know how to explain it. Because um, if you take out the cars, all you're really left with is just that just three little pieces of the cafe which kind of sucks i mean 
the cards really just added to the value and the amount of pieces for something like this. Because all of this together is 517 pieces, but take away the cars and it's kind of a lackluster cafe. It has a launcher built in. It's kind of just like a rubber band. It has little, uh, this little like car wash thing. They're like little spiky brushes. It's kind of weird. These aren't actually attached either, which I found kind of strange, kind of just loose. So if like you were to leave this on the ground and you try picking it up, you're just gonna end up picking up the roof. You don't even get the whole thing. Uh, I can see why people glue their Legos together now, but this one over here has like little gas pumps and whatnot. This one, it came complete, but for some reason it didn't even have the sticker that said flows. So now I just have a V8 cafe. We don't know who this belongs to. And the interior inside is pretty nice. I just question why there's coffee mugs. How does the car even drink out of that? But that's more of a Lego thing, not actually, you know, cars themselves. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. They had like wine glasses in cars too. There's the back, pretty lackluster. There's a lot of little Technic pieces that work together to create that little launch feature. And the V8 logo is actually pretty cool. It's made of uh, separate little parts. This uh, red piece right here, this red piece as well as these two silver, no, white circles, I should say. They're not even silver. They should have done silver. Anyways, the vehicles, they're pretty nice. You get the Radiator Springs Lightning McQueen. Despite it being a Cars 2 set, it is it's clearly from Cars 1 because of that McQueen look. If they would have put Cars 2 McQueen in this set, then yeah, it's a Cars 2 set from the beginning of the movie. But you'll see with the Mac that we're about to look at next, same thing, it was marketed as Cars 2 on the box, but it very clearly is something from the first Cars movie. So I guess in a sense, it's kind of cool. They released a couple Cars 1 sets or inspired by the first movie during the runtime of the second movie, because that just gives people, I guess, variety in a sense of what they want. Mater is kind of a weird build. I'm not a fan of those huge freaking puppy ear rear view mirrors. It, I think it just looks goofy. It doesn't look good in my opinion. It just, no, I'm not a fan of the build for Mater. Um, Flo, yeah, she's she's all right. The wings, I mean, or the tail fins, they're, they're all right, I guess. It, it looks a little weird. The front half does look decent. Um, Sally looks fine as well, I guess. Yeah, nothing much to say. I mean, the lack of fenders. It's like she took advice from Francesco and took them off, but that's kind of like how Lego cars are in the first place. Same with McQueen here. No fenders either, but I like the printing and everything on the side of him. And the uh, Fillmore, he's pretty much just a block. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is backwards. I think it might have to go like this, actually. Or maybe I just made it look worse. That, that looks wrong. I think both ways looks wrong. What the heck? It looks weird. Anyways, I don't know why that's like that. There's the side. These are printed pieces, which is kind of cool. He's got one little rear view mirror here. And this front piece is printed as well, which is pretty nice. And then Sarge, he looks pretty cool. Bit of a strange proportion with the roof, with this tile right here. But other than that, I think he looks pretty true to the character. Looks nice. So that was Flo's V8 Cafe, that is set number 8487. So now let's move on to the Mac set. No doubt this was the one I had the most fun building. It has two little accessories that you sort of build before you get to Mac. This is kind of like a little rack to put these little plastic tools it comes with. They are removable. Neat little thing it comes with. It's not important or adds anything to the set really, but it's nice to, you know, include it. It's just a little something extra. Same with this little flag with a cone. And then the actual Mac build itself, you have his hauler and the actual semi. It's a pretty good build. I like it. Nothing is printed, unfortunately. Everything is stickers. Well, the mouth and the eyes are printed, but everything else like the lightning bolt, the number, the Rusty's logo on the cap, that's all stickers. And you've got your little rear view mirror. It's kind of like Mater, but it just looks better on Mac. I like the exhaust pipes here and the the way it just works and connects. I like the design of that. They did really good with that. Um, the amount of tires, they got it all like <laughs> biblically accurate. I mean, it just looks great. He looks to scale. Fantastic. One of my favorites for sure. The hauler is kind of like something Mattel has done where you can open it up and it doesn't just open, you know, from the door. 
Um, I will say the door is a little weirdly proportioned, but you're going to see the one from Cars 3. It's even worse than this. Um, it's on these like little hinges, and there's this little like black border. It makes you think it's almost not, not to scale. And you open it up, and McQueen's in there. And it comes with the Cars 1 Lightning McQueen. How I mentioned earlier, how they made two Cars 1 sets, Flo's Cafe and Mac. And this one looks pretty good, too. It's a classic look. You got the spoiler also relying on hinges there, which was an interesting little design. I don't think they did a cruising Lightning McQueen, but if they did, I think, you know, the easiest way would have, you know, they would have probably just made it like this. It would have looked great. I'm sure someone's probably made a custom out there. Um, the only thing I, I will say is I don't like how low the spoiler sits on these Lego cars, especially with McQueen. But you'll see the other cars, some of them do it better, especially like the Cars 2 McQueen. It looks a bit more proportionate. Same with like Shoot to the Rogi and Francesco. And um, that's, you know, that's McQueen. All of these on the side are stickers. I am pretty good at putting on stickers. So luckily I got that in a decent matter. The only thing is I don't like is that each sticker does cut off part of the letters. I honestly think they should have done printed pieces. That would have been a lot better. This is also a sticker. You can open it up from the roof and the left side. Yeah, left side for us. And of course the door. And there's more details inside, but they're of course, like I said, just stickers. You got a little TV that says Piston Cup, Revolting, Piston Cup, 95, Little Lightning McQueen sticker, and of course, Harv, which was the shocker for me. Um, you don't really see Harv on any Cars merchandise for that matter, so it's pretty cool to see him here in Lego form. The way it works, you just drive up McQueen on the ramp, and he kind of just parks there. This is this little bumper here to stop him. Uh, honestly, I don't get why they didn't just do the whole thing. There's these, like, other parts of the hauler that don't have these little black tiles. I think they should have just, like, extended this. I mean, what is that? Just, like, four more studs, and you would have had a complete trailer? I mean, I don't know if you could fit two cars in here comfortably. Not really. I mean, can you close it? That's what really matters. Oh, well, you can. So... I mean, if they just extended it a little, that looks wrong. That looks so wrong. If you just extended it a little, it would have worked out, in my opinion. Uh, but overall, it's a great build. Another one of my favorite sets from the collection. It looks great. Proportions are nice. It even has a little kickstand here for when the hauler is parked. And I know there's going to be that one guy saying, or not even guy, child. There's going to be that one child in the comments that's going to be like, um, com compare it to Disney Cars Dinecast. Compare it to the size of 155 scale. Okay. I will. Here's something you probably don't have because you weren't even born yet. This is the 2006 or 2007 Mac that opens up and it has like a bathroom and stuff inside. Very similar in concept to, you know, the Lego Mac that we just saw. But there you go. Get an idea of the size of these guys. Pretty similar, if I'm going to be honest. And there you go. That is Cars one Mac. Actually, it just occurred to me that little spot right there is kind of just to put this stuff. If it's a little too perfectly. Look at that. <laughs> I take it back what I said. It's a little storage unit for the accessories. Oh, and also, I forgot, people are probably going to ask for comparison size-wise between a car from Mattel and, you know, a Lego one. Lego one is slightly bigger, but almost the same sort of size and deal. And there you go. Here we have Escape at Sea. And this one comes with Professor Z, the boat, and Finn McMissile. Little hydro devices on the bottom. Not a fan of the monocle. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I would have preferred it just to be printed on him, to be honest. And this goofy ass, whatever the heck this is, C-3PO looking ass arm attached to a magnifying glass. To kind of make it look like that. I mean, okay, I get it. Yeah, the eye looks bigger and stuff. When you actually put it against the magnifying glass, that's kind of cool. But it's so hard to make it look appealing without it looking like that. Most of the time, you'll see it like this in photos and stuff. I, 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 no, just, no, I'm not, not a fan of this Professor Z. The boat looks cool, though. S same with the big missile. You get these little, like, I don't even know what they're called. All right, here is the next set. Jeff Gorvet. Yeah. Next one. Here we have Ivan Mater. 
Uh, yippee! It, it, this was a set? Are you kidding me? This is like a fucking poly bag. Rod Torque Redline. Y yeah, what, what the hell are these sets, man? Nah, I'm joking. This one actually was a building event for Toys R Us. The seller included a copy in black and white. He didn't want to waste ink on me. Um, it comes with your building instructions and information on the event. This was on Saturday, October 15th from 2 to 4, way back in 2011 or 12. I'm not too sure. And you would build the American Spy Car Rod Torque Redline. Oh, this is so cool, man. How Toys R Us used to do those like little Lego building events. And it did come with instructions how to build it. Interesting little build. I liked it. Simple. Something free, too. You know, you didn't have to pay for this. You could just come in and build it. It was part of Bricktober, and this was your little sticker sheet for the car. It had the eyes, the mouth, and the license plate. So not much to say about this guy. He's pretty simple. I would have added a flat tile here, kind of like these right here, maybe just like two, but in blue, and then put the license plate there. I think that would have looked a little bit more proportionate. But other than that, it's completely brick built. So it's a bunch of random blue bricks, really, make up the car. You honestly could probably make this at home if you have the right parts. You just need, obviously, the stickers for the eyes and such. But, I mean, honestly, you could probably just make the eyes out of paper, too. Agent Mater's Escape. This one's kind of simple. It has a little World Grand Prix camera, which is a nice little unique build. The legs are a little funky, but it looks kind of cool at the same time. It does not spin around. It is stuck in place, but you can remove it. And then we have this random green car. I, I No, this isn't Pacer, so I don't know who the heck this is supposed to be. And a lot of these spy cars have this, like, little missile that you can, like, shoot out or whatever. He got away, bro. You didn't even try shooting him. And, of course, you also have Mater, which is the cool one. I mean, it has a little, like... What is there not to like about this one? It has a little parachute. It has guns. Like, this boy is strapped. And a really funky looking expression, but I like it. It works. It, it's amazing. And he's got the jets. I mean, this is a cool one, bro. Like, I honestly, I really like this one. Mater in himself is quite the complex little build for Lego. I like it. They fit so much detail into him that it's pretty impressive. I still don't like those little puppy dog ear rear view mirrors. But other than that, the fact that you have this bar right here with his light and his tow hook and the jets, and just everything. It looks really, really good. Here we have the Spy Jet Escape. So many of these sets are called Escape. Interesting. Same thing with the Flows V8 Cafe. Take away the cars, and the build is Sidley, the main attraction here. Pretty nice little build. The only thing I'm not a fan of is this huge freaking gap between the door and the actual plane. Like, you can't tell me there wasn't a better way of doing this. I mean, yeah, LEGO has improved over the years, but I'm sure, yeah, this wouldn't slide by today in Lego standards. I'm sh like, I'm pretty certain they've come up with a piece to make it look more appealing than this. But the whole idea is, you know, like the Mattel one, you open it up and you can put a vehicle inside. Mater obviously will not fit, but something like more like, I guess, Finn McMissile will fit. No? Okay, yeah, he fits, but it's it's kind of a tight fit. Maybe that's why they left that gap, so that the car could barely fit? Question mark? I don't know. Um, pretty nice build. You can remove the roof, although it's, you know, it's not one piece, it's several. And you can kind of just see the interior. There's not much. I'm breaking this thing the more I touch it. Um, but yeah, not my favorite. I thought the jet was going to be bigger, Sidley, right here. A um, lot smaller than I thought, to be honest, but... You know, for what it is, I guess it's all right. I like spinning it around. That's pretty fun. And the vehicles it comes with, it has a couple exclusives. Um, this Mater, I think this expression is... No, it's not It's not even exclusive to this one. Because the Big Ben one has this Mater with this expression too, but with rockets. So we've seen this expression on a Mater before, but this one doesn't have any accessories or guns. It's more of a classic Mater. I think this one for sure is the exclusive though. The... Um, Security guard Finn McMissile. That one's pretty nice. You get a uh, pacer. The roof looks kind of kind of goofy, kind of big. And you have Holly Shiftwell. First time we see her in one of these sets in regular form. There is another Holly Shiftwell set where she has like a little eye visor. 
I don't have that one yet, but I'm pretty sure the eye visor just attaches to like little front studs there. And then we have Grem. But um, I remember Grem being orange, not red. I don't even know if this is Grem. I mean, it's a Gremlin car, but it's not the Grem from the, you know, airport chase scene. Because we have this oil rig set we're about to look at next. And this is my boy Grem in orange, you know. And these two are the exact same build. But I don't know. I don't know why they put a red Gremlin in there. Oil rig escape. Another escape. This one has a couple cool cars, like the Gram we just took a look at. Pretty nice. Love the orange. It pops out a lot. And then we have a Finn McMissile, also exclusive to the set, if I'm not mistaken, with a grappling hook and these two little fins on the side. Finn with fins. Huh. And then he's got a little propeller on the back. So I'm assuming this is uh, the scuba diving one, when he's actually underwater once he got shot and, you know... When you transition basically from this one to this one. So it's pretty cool that they really went in to do so many variants of these characters in Lego form. And then we have another Professor Z here. This time with a different expression. The same thing. It's got that goofy C-3PO droid looking arm. And that ugly monocle. Uh, not a fan of it. Really just not a fan of Professor Z in Lego form to begin with. And then we have two parts to the oil rig. We have this one right here with a helicopter pad, a shipping container that can open up, little stands right there, and Leland Turbo. Yeah, in, uh, in Lego form, dead, just sitting there with his eyes deep and dark. Sure, <laughs> that's a little weird, but you know, you can crank this down and there's a little little thing to attach your lego cars to it's not a magnet by any means but it's you know it's it's here and you can use it and it's functional but um leland turbo isn't that great and then the other part to the set is this massive sort of tower thing with a flame and this it, it just looks great i love it it has this crane also I think this might be one of the cranes that like Finn McMissile like first jumped on when the whole sequence just started when Professor she's like, it's Finn McMissile! And then like Finn McMissile's theme song plays and stuff. I think it might be the crane, it's just a different color. Now this is definitely an interesting one. It is the Big Bang Clock. And just like the Flo's V8 Cafe set, this one has 743 pieces. It seems like a lot, but take away the cars and you're only left with the clock and those two little accessories down there. But even without the cars, I think it's a pretty cool build. It is mainly Technic parts, this whole clock here, with all of these little structures and the pins and whatnot, but it looks really good. I like it. You have these opening sliding doors. You can kind of just put a car to come through here, just like in the movie. Pretty cool. You can close that up. Here on this side, there is no doors. That's the only thing I'm not a big fan of is the lack of, you know, walls i guess because the front looks really nice and everything with the clock and everything and you come to the side and there's almost little to nothing there's another little crank here for you to pull down kind of like the uh oil rig escape we just saw this comes down you can attach vehicles and whatnot to the side of this you crank that back up and on the back there's this other mechanic that i fail to see the point of from what I understand, what you're supposed to do is you load up a car. We're going to put McQueen. Fuck it. Why not? You put him there and you're supposed to hit the car here and they're supposed to jump out of the clock. Yeah, that happens. Well, he's supposed to fly out. Now that the door's busted open, you can probably just, yeah, do that. The lack of walls is a little disappointing. Little details down here are nice, but they are stickers. And then you have this little like stand for the Queen of England. She is missing a part. It's supposed to be like this crown that goes around and this little stone is supposed to be on the top of it. I don't know why they didn't include it when they claimed the set was complete. Everyone who I bought these sets from claimed they were complete. Um, this one, it was really just missing that one part. And that Tokyo set had a bunch of swapped out parts. So for example, like in the instructions, it said you need a yellow 2x6 and they threw in a gray one. And it would just throw me off because I was like, I I'm missing a piece. But it turns out I had the piece just not in the right color, but they still claim it as a complete set. Are they wrong? 
technically no, but still yes, because it's not the same brick that was included. So the Queen of England, um, you know, not much to say. White on blue. Pretty simple little build. This looks nice. Looks great. And then we have our second variant of Holly with the wings this time. Like in the London scene. Another Professor Z. This one seems to be a duplicate of the one with the boat escape set. Just that this time he has this little... I don't even know what this is. Miles Axelrod. I think this is the only set where you get him in. And thank God it is because I don't think he translates well to Lego either. He looks kind of goofy. He looks like a frog. <laughs> uh, the shape is just not there in my opinion. I think they should have made him a little bit more blocky. More squared looking. He, he just... I don't know. It, it's the eyes, I think. Maybe the fact that they're slanted back. It's just not the right proportions, in my opinion. Mater, however, is a pretty cool one. It has the guns on the side, and he even has his ticking time bomb on the hood and the rockets that are different to the one with, you know, the one with the parachute. This one was a bigger, more complex build, but this one kind of just blends in a little bit more. Um, I don't know how to say more. I ju it just looks a little bit more natural. But it is inaccurate because the the rockets are supposed to come through here, like the Mater we just saw with the parachute. This looks a little bit more like what Salt Flats Mater from Cars on the Road should look like, but it's still a nice little Mater variant. Um, random set. Yeah. If it wasn't for the lot, I wouldn't have picked it up because I, I, I'm not a fan of it. It's just a stock standard McQueen and Francesco with a little sort of banner thing for racing. I guess if you wanted just to buy these cars back then and didn't want a big set, this was the way to go. But other than that, um, don't have a use for it. Now, here's an obscure one. It is Red and Pacer. Never do these appear in the movie together, but surprisingly, this is one of the more rare sets from the Cars 2 lot. Pacer here has a sort of like visor thing and a blowtorch on the side or a missile. And this sort of, I don't know what that is on the back of him. A nuke, maybe? Jeez. Um, but it, it, it definitely is a weird set. Red, however, is a cool little build. I like the structure of him. The ladder moves, um, little rubber parts on the side, in the rubber tires, and all those little gauges and details. It looks great. I really like how Red looks in Lego form. They did a good job with this one. Really like it. Just a little weirded out with the pairing. I would have put maybe um, Sheriff. And last but not least, we have this Tokyo race set that has Francesco, McQueen, and Shuta Roki. And let me tell you, this is a pretty grand set. Love the pits and everything, and the vehicles included. You get a bunch of cars. You get McQueen, Francesco, Shuta Roki, Luigi, Guido, Francesco's Pity, Shuta Roki's Pity, and Mater. You get eight cars and a sort of like little um, finish line. And all those little pit stop barriers, it's great. I love it. It's like a little mini racetrack diorama. Bit of a closer look at the detail. I love this at the top of McQueen's little pit row. Luigi and Guido. Francesco's pit. Shoot to the Rokies. Mater is the stock standard one, I think, from the other sets we've seen. Let me take a look at the expression real quick. He does have his headset, though, which looks kind of cool. He doesn't have his rear view mirrors, but he does have a microphone. So it looks cool. I like that little Mater variant. Um, classic Lightning McQueen. There is a set that has Raul, Max Schnell, and a Kachow Lightning McQueen. I want to get my hands on that one next. I couldn't get it in time for this video. It is kind of a rare one. Um, but they did a bunch of the World Grand Prix racers. Not all of them, unfortunately. Shoot to the Rookie does look weird, though. Not a fan of his build. It looks kind of goofy. <laughs> but um, Francesco looks cool as well. Spoiler is kind of big. And I don't like the white thing over his head. I wish it was in green, like, you know, how it should be in the movie. But, oh well. Looks good. Looks good. And to wrap off, here is the Cars 3 LEGO Junior set. And it's crazy that, I mean, it just makes me think, how far were they into production with the finale of Cars 3? Because, look at this guy. He's got the 51 on him. Like the original ending. But at the same time, you also get a 51 Cruiser Mirrors in Dynaco form in this set. Really, really weird. And we also get Jackson Storm in his original gray color and not the black color that we see at the finale 
or the final version of the film, I should say, Mac is extremely tiny compared to the Cars 2 one. Let me pull that one out. I have it here on the side with me. And just to give you an idea of how much smaller he got, take a look at that. That's crazy. The size of this is the size of just the semi right here. Not including this. It's almost, yeah, it's pretty much half of it. Or just, you know, this back portion. Y you get what I'm saying. But, yeah, it's uh, Lego Juniors. Simpler to build. Honestly, if it were up to me, I would stick with the Cars 2 style of Lego sets where it just fits into a Lego city or to any Lego collection. Lego Juniors... I mean, it didn't live long, I think. And these car sets, I, I think just... I mean, they're better than the Lego Duplo ones. Like the one that came out last year. And there's a Mac one coming out this year. But it doesn't even have the trailer. It's just the front semi part, which is extremely disappointing. But I definitely think Lego needs to go back to the roots of cars, Lego sets. And just do something better. I do, however, like that little notch right there with the ballpoint to hold Mac in place. Whereas, you know, the one from Cars 2, the only thing that was holding it up was a little brick piece right there, as you could see. You kind of just zoom in there. Yeah, and it's kind of flimsy, as you clearly just saw. So this was a little better, a little bit more robust for kids or just in general. The interior can fit two cars, unlike the one from Cars uh, 2. Not a fan of the door. I did mention this earlier. Look how unproportionate that looks. I mean, the door's so high up in the air. And they put these like little black studs, I guess, to like kind of not have the door like flying midair. Because if you take off these black studs, look at that. You just, it just looks wrong. And yeah, I get it. The door's supposed to come down and you can put the cars up the ramp. But look how they come up the ramp. Just, just look at this. It almost, I mean, it fits, but it almost looks like they're not going to fit because of the spoiler. Yes, they fit barely by an inch. But not even an inch, by like a centimeter. But it's just, I don't know. It's a really dumbed down version. And I mean, I can't complain because it is for kids or whatever. But, you know, you also get Guido. A lot more simpler than the one from Cars 2. You get the Jackson Storm. You get the sort of like little um, finish line sort of thing. You get this little gas pump. And you get this... Uh, Whatever this is, I think a concession stand or I don't know what this is. This is supposed to be a separate piece. I just put it at the top so I wouldn't lose it. Little trophy, um, not the piston cup, just a generic trophy. But honestly, I just wanted to set for the cars as, you know, anyone like who's a Marvel or Star Wars Lego collector would just want the figures from a set that's terrible. So these look great. I love them. And it was a fun little build. I mean, I finished it in what I... 15 20 minutes does not take long it's a little junior set only has about 266 pieces there's the box mint in box um i did want to talk about the instructions how they have illustrations here and let me show you so they start you off with the build of mcqueen and storm and the little piston cup and look what they show you was that supposed to be the flip tell me i'm crazy but I know they send these companies, you know, photos and pictures of the movie so that they can make their merchandise in time for the film. And I'm pretty sure someone had to send this from Pixar so that they could have an idea of what they wanted this final set to be. But that just made me question so many things. And I think there's more illustrations on here. I don't think you can get copyrighted for showing an instruction manual. It's not a book by technically speaking, but okay. I think that's the only one for that one. This one has some weird illustrations like, like that one. That one I know is just goofy fantasy. I highly doubt that was going to happen in the movie. So you have this one also of crews coming into the pits. Granted, I don't get why we're getting two number 51 racers in the set. Because if the original movie ending did happen, she would have to be 95. So I'm thinking they threw in this Danico Cruiser Mirrors in last minute. But let me know what your thoughts are on those guys right there. And last but not least, this is one of my favorites as well. It is this large-scale Francesco with his pity. You don't even have to put the pity inside. Give me just this and I'm happy. I mean, 
it looks fantastic. The size is great. I mean, compared to like one of the little cars over here, check this out. Just to give you an idea of the difference, there's also a McQueen and a Mater, but those are so freaking rare. And eventually I'll get McQueen and Mater one day. I'm really excited for McQueen especially, but Francesco is the least rare of the bunch. And I, I just love the size. It's bigger than the Lego Speed Champions car, like the ones from nowadays, like the Nissan Skyline, the Toyota Supra, all of those other ones. But it's not as big as a Lego Technic car, like the NASCAR car or the um, Lego Mustang Shelby. So it's right in between Lego Speed Champions and Lego Technic $50 sets. Not too big or not too small. This is a great size. I think they need to bring the size back. It looks fantastic and the detail is just able to be shown beautifully. So that concludes my review on the Cars 2 Lego sets. Let me know if you have any of these and if you enjoyed the video. One of the only Cars 2 sets I had as a kid, believe it or not, was this one right here. This is the only one I had. And I didn't open it for this video because, I mean, Luigi and Guido are in that set. And they're exactly the same as these. You just get that little exclusive pit row from Japan. But I will say this. I will take any of these Cars 2 Lego sets over the crap they're putting out today. It's unfortunate to see how far we've gotten from that to that to that. Huge difference. I wish we could go back to these style of Lego sets from Cars 2. Anyways, that's it from me, Piston Cup Productions, signing out, and I will see you guys next time.